because it's probably the most meaningful of all the flutes I have um, for a number of reasons. One is that, um, you know, these days the uh, Native American flutes that you find are, uh, a lot of them are made by non-Native Americans and uh, they're turned on a, on a lathe. I mean, they're handmade, most of them. Uh, all the ones I have are handmade, but a lot of them are machined. This particular one I um, got from a, uh, a, a Nipmuc Indian in Maine um, by the name of Hawk Henry's. And as he says, it's completely made with nothing but uh, his hands and fire. <laughs> and um, he's also very um, sensitive, I think, about the materials that go into it. For example, the wood itself is northern white cedar that came from the woods of a friend of his who was a master bookbinder, and he chose it specifically for me because he knew I taught um, literature and the accent woods on the uh, end pieces and also the hand carved dragonfly fetish which he specifically made for me come from a piece of uh, 150 year old pear wood that was gifted to him from some friends in Europe and so that has its own bit of significance. The dragonfly is, is the totem that I adopted when I first started playing because some, of some rather intense dreams I had and I started a blog site actually called The Journey of the Dragonfly. And then the other thing that's significant is that on the very end there's an, uh, an, um, a prayer inscribed, a dragonfly prayer that um, uh, relates also to the uh, Algonquin people, and Nipmuc's a part of the Algonquin um, civilization. And the, um, at the top of it, there are actually two halves that mirror each other, but if we look at just one of the halves, at the top there is the symbol of the dragonfly, and just below it the symbol of the eagle. The dragonfly is the peacemaker, the eagle is um, the messenger from the creator who hands it off to a bird, there's a symbol of a bird below that, who then carries the message to the people. And below that there are seven little dots recogni um, recognizing the Algonquin people but also the, the seven sisters, the Pleiades, representing uh, the universe, and then the whole image is mirrored in the other half to suggest the uh, masculine and feminine principles, a kind of yin-yang symbol, which is also picked up in the flute itself. The wood of the flute represents the feminine principle. The air that is blown through it represents the message of the creator, and the two together course create that sense of wholeness and unity. Uh, so when I play this flute I often think of that prayer and I often think of my journey of the dragonfly as I've come to call it. How long have you been playing now? It's been about two and a half years now and um, you'd asked me earlier about how I started to play it. The dream was, was part of it. But also, um, I went to a workshop, uh, it's been almost three years ago now, on the didgeridoo uh, from Australia. You can see I've got one there in the corner that's uh, hollowed out. It's, it's an authentic one, hollowed out by termites from a eucalyptus branch. And um, I started to learn that. I'm, I, you know, I, I use it for meditation. I still haven't learned circular breathing. I keep trying, but I just never mastered it. And then not too long afterwards, I went um, to see um, a woman play the Native American flute, um, uh, Kate, Canadian Miller. And um, 
it was just beautiful. It was music to my ears. And afterwards, I talked to her for a while. And I said, you know, I've, I've always wanted to learn to play that, but I just can't get circular breathing down. And she said, you don't need to circular breathe. Really? Cool. <laughs> I think within the week, I had ordered my first uh, flute on, online. And I haven't been able to stop since. I play probably for at least an hour every single day, seven days a week for the last two and a half years. I, I might have missed, you know, three or four days when I had a sore throat or something, but uh, I can't put it down. I keep playing it and, uh, and I keep coming back to it. And it, um, you know, it's interesting. On the one hand, it makes me forget the world and just relax. On the other hand, it forces me to reflect on the world. It makes me more thoughtful and more insightful. And again, there's that kind of bipolarity <laughs> that you you know you're searching for some some common ground. But you know, when you're looking at literature, when you're looking at the arts, when we're talking about metaphor, don't we run into the same thing? You know, we've got a literal meaning, we've got a symbolic meaning. Students want to make it an either-or proposition, and we're trying to convince them. It doesn't have to be no or yes. It can be a kind of resonating yes, no, or no, yes. <laughs> it's not an off-on switch. It's, it's somehow the ability to wrap your mind around both possibilities at the same time. And I, and I think the flute helps me understand that. Uh, although, you know, every time you try to intellectualize it, you lose it immediately.